Both the Scott Addict Gravel 30 and the Surly Grappler are gravel bikes, but they have about as much in common as a Great Dane and a Chihuahua. But if you're in the market for a gravel bike priced around £2,500, then which should you choose? I'll run you through the case for both bikes in this video, but before I do, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? First up, it's the Scott Addict Gravel 30, which brings the cutting edge aerodynamic design of the Pro Tour proven Addict RC road bike and splices it with big tire clearance. It's going up against Surly's Minnesota monster, the Grappler. It brings mountain bike sensibilities and some tech to make for a bike with monster truck-like abilities to go anywhere. Neither bike will break the bank. The Scott will set you back 2,549 pounds or 3,000 $199. Surly's Grappler is cheaper at £2,350 or $2,599. Though I suspect a large chunk of Grappler customers will look at buying a frame set for a custom build. In that instance, it's £850 or $799. I'll start off by looking at the frames of these two off road adventure machines. Surly bikes certainly do things differently, be it a long wheelbase haulage bike, fat tire tourers, or this tall, chunky gravel machine. The Grappler takes its basic outline of a gravel bike, drop bars and big tire clearances, and switches things up to make something truly unique. At the front, it's noticeably taller than pretty much every other gravel bike on the market. My large test bike frame has a stack of 641 millimeters. That's 31.3 millimeters taller than the Scott. The reach is also long at 444 millimetres. That's 38 millimetres longer than its rival here too. I imagine this would create a weirdly Frankenbike ride position, but these numbers combined with the relaxed 69.5 degree head angle and a short 80 mil stem mean the on-bike position feels pretty spot on. You're not overly cramped or too stretched. It's a ride position that's more akin to a mountain bike than a fast road bike. The frame and fork both have huge clearances and the bike is designed to work with both 29er and 650B wheel sizes. Tire clearances are 2.8 inches for 650B or 2.2 inches for 29. They've managed such large tire clearances by adopting the mountain bike boost standard for the hubs, which means 110 millimeters for the fork. At the rear, it's Surly's not boost design, which means the stays are flexible enough to be able to be spread outwards to 148 millimeter boost spacing or clamped up down to 142 millimeters. As you might expect, the Grappler has fittings for pretty much anything, including mug guards, rack bosses, and bottle bosses galore. It also has the flexibility to be run with either a single ring or a two by chain ring. Moving on to the Scott, and the Addict Gravel is the brand's first carbon machine built solely for gravel. It brings a lot of thinking behind the Pro Tour Addict RC to off-road design. That means an aerodynamically optimized frame, design bringing in integration between the frame and the fork, and full internal cable routing. The ride position is long and low, but they've given the speedy design plenty of tire clearance with up to 40 millimeters clearance on the 700C wheels. The Addict Gravel's geometry isn't quite as long and low as the Pro Tour RC, but it's noticeably more aggressive than the Endurance Biased Addict. Size for size, the gravel in a 58 centimeter has a 609.7 millimeter stack and a 406.1 millimeter reach compared to the Addict's 613.6 millimeters and 398.6 millimeters. That gives the Addict gravel a really purposeful ride position that's noticeably lower and longer than most. It's exacerbated by a long 113 millimeter stem and it all adds up to a gravel bike that those used to a fast road bike will be totally at home on. Scott uses its own patented take on airfoil shapes for the frame set. The tapering seat tube has plenty of truncated airfoil about it. The down tube has a more muscular squared off profile, albeit with smooth curves on the profile's edges. Scott has optimized the carbon layup in both the fork legs and the seat stays to provide a bit of compliance to minimize vibrations over poor surfaces. The drop stays and forward arching design of the fork are also intended to smooth out the ride too. Looking at the components on each bike and starting with the Grappler's build, it stands out as there's not a glimpse of Shimano or SRAM in sight. Instead, the build uses MicroShift's drivetrain. The right-hand Advent X lever controls the 10-speed MicroShift rear mech over the massively wide 1148 tooth cassette. 
the left hand shifter is used to control the Transex dropper post. The 32 tooth chainring looks minimal compared to the dinner plate sized rear cassette, but the combination works for the grappler. Shifting is quick on the downshift and upshifts are a little slower, but manageable. Compared to GRX or SRAM's one by, the shifting is just not as fast or as slick and smooth. Despite this, it does the job competently and hasn't let me down. The lighter gears do have some major jumps. The last three gears jump from 36 to 40 and then to 48. I really like the 3248 combo on slimy single track climbs. It's allowed me to stay seated and keep traction and keep spinning the pedals too. Don't expect the Surly to be a quick climber as at 13.77 kilos for a size large, it makes it more cart horse than race horse. The WTB rims on Novatec Boost Space hubs are a fine combination of smooth hubs and torque wheels wrapped up in Terravale's 2.5 inch wide tires. These opened up trails and tracks that skinnier tired gravel bikes just can't cope with. A wide salsa cow chipper bar adds to the grappler's confident handling when things get rough. Even though the cable operated brakes can't hold a candle to the controlled power of the GRX hydraulics on the Scott, that did little to dampen my enthusiasm for chucking the grappler downhill. The bike would be improved immeasurably by stoppers that had more feel than the fistfuls of pressure I had to exert on the mirror brakes just to arrest the 13 kilos of grappler in full flow. The Attic Gravel 30's build is all good stuff. The Shimano GRX RX600 drivetrain is Shimano's gravel equivalent of 105. It's a solid performing, sharp shifting group that simply works well. The 2 by setup of the 30 suits the bike. The 4630 chain ring combo matched to an 1134 cassette gives a solid range for full off-road duties. I was able to get up the steerers ramps both on and off-road and 4611 is ample to hit the high pace off-road and keep up with slick tired riders when you're riding on tarmac too. The GRX 400 hydraulic brakes are again solid performers with power plenty and a good level of feel through the lever travel. On a couple of particularly gritty and grimy wet rides I did experience a fair amount of rotor scrape and a bit of noise under hard braking but the power control remained constant. Scott's component partners Synchros provide the bulk of the Addicts finishing kit. The RR 2.0 stem combined with the alloy crest and bar is a fine combination. The bar's 16 degree flare is more subtle than most, giving the Addict more of a fast road cockpit than a wide gravel bar. The compact shape with a 70mm reach and a 115mm drop works well with the Addict's long reach and long stem. It means the Addict never feels overstretched. Synchro's RP 2.0 disc wheels come from the road stable. The shallow 24mm rims are ready for tubeless and have a 19mm internal width. The 45mm wide Swabby G1 bike tyres are about as wide as you want to go on these rims, but they shape up fine. They do spread outwards from the rim, but not in an extreme, unstable light bulb shape. The G1 bikes are a fine three season gravel option. The studded tread is broadly spread on the tyre's shoulders, which provides good grip uh, in loose or wet gravel conditions. At 1740 grams a pair, the wheels aren't exactly light, but they roll with plenty of life, adding to the gravel's overall speedy character. The Gravel 30's weight of 9.42 kilos for a 58 centimetre bike is impressive when you consider the middling wheel weight. Though the Gravel 30 is even quicker with a light wheel upgrade. I switched in a set of Hunt carbon gravel wheels and shaved off more than 300 grams, which was a difference I could feel. The back end sees the Addict get an aero shaped carbon seat post that's there for efficiency into the wind. I was impressed with Scott's simple clamp that prevented any slippage even in some very muddy and wet conditions. That's often the downfall of complex internal hidden seat clamps. The aero post, however, does mean you can't fit a dropper post. Okay, let's move on to how these two very different bikes ride. The Surly isn't a sprinter's weapon like the Scott but it's brilliant to head out and just go exploring. The big volume tires swallow up ruts, lumps, rocks and roots with ease. The grappler's ability to stay planted on long rutted climbs and track true on technical trails that had me zigzagging on the Scott offsets the Surly's weight penalty over its rival. When you start to descend, the grappler's mass is more of a help than a hindrance. Again, helping the bike stay on line, allowing the chunky tires to just absorb the shocks it's also where the addition of a dropper post really comes into its own. Drop the saddle out of the way and make the most of this low slung sloping frame design and the grappler becomes a demon descender. That's more mountain bike than adapted road machine. The 88mm trail figure makes for a great load carrying bike packing companion. 
It's an easy rider for big miles with stability for when things get rapid and rough. It's a completely different story on the Scott. The Attic Gravels ride is fast, blisteringly fast. It's at its absolute pinnacle when the gravel roads are open, straight and speedy. It accelerates with road bike like whip and being able to get down into a flat backed aero position helps maintain the pace you've built. The 71 degree head angle gives a balanced feel to the handling. It's quick enough to navigate the twists and turns of a forest fire road descent or a tarmac road for that matter, whilst taking enough sting out of ruts and rocks too. Tight twisty single track isn't really the addict's forte. The long ride position just isn't ideal for more technical trails. Out in a big wide open, however, there's very little to touch the gravel addict's turn of speed. The Scott is very much a racer's gravel choice. It could be exceptional with a couple of changes, namely a wheel upgrade and a more performance orientated saddle. If you're looking for one bike for all, the Attic Gravel would be a superb choice. It's road bike fast on tarmac and swift in the rough too. How do I sum up all that and decide a winner? The Grappler is the gravel bike equivalent of a classic Land Rover. It's not fast, but it's oh so capable and it's masses of fun. The odd job build on the whole works, but it needs better brakes to truly get the best out of its go anywhere abilities. I've loved the Grappler. It's a gravel bike that gets you off the track and into the wild. Scott's Attic Gravel 30 comes from the same school as stripped down gravel racers like Cervelo's Aspero and Specialized Crux. The difference with the Attic Gravel 30 is that none of these rivals offer a bike at an equivalent price of under 3,000 pounds. It's truly magnificent on fast gravel roads, but the long, low road fast ride position does make it a handful when the going gets technical. Of the two, the Attic Gravel is the fastest in the right conditions. The stiff frame and fork rely much more heavily on the tyres for cushioning and comfort. That's the trade-off for the way in which the Attic gathers speed. It's the most road of these two off-roaders, and that just might appeal to plenty of riders who haven't yet tried out the joys of getting drop bar dirty. Which one would I choose? Well. I don't currently own a modern mountain bike, but I do have a fast gravel bike, so I'd probably opt for the Surly, albeit with better brakes. That said, if I was a rider looking for a fast gravel bike for day trips and events rather than bikepacking adventures, then the Scott Addict Gravel 30 is one of the best around. Which one would you choose? The Burley Surly or the Whippet Light Scott? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you're looking for even more gravel goodness, why not watch this video? And if you're wondering which one's gonna fare better in these snowy and icy conditions, I'll leave that up to your imagination.